In this video, we're going to use crystal field theory to understand color changes in transition metal complexes. All right, so here's an overview of crystal field theory. Uh, these are the d orbitals uh, that are useful in transition metal chemistry. Uh, when these orbitals uh, are put in the field of ligands, uh, they experience varying degrees of electronic repulsion. If this is an octahedral ligand, what we've seen in a prior video, is that the dc squared and the dx squared minus y squared are destabilized more than uh, the three other d orbitals. Right? So this leads to uh, a splitting between d orbitals uh, between uh, a set of three that we call T2G and a set of two orbitals that we call EG. All right, so this is how the orbital diagram looks like for the D orbitals in transition metal complexes when you are in an octahedral ligand environment. All right, so using this crystal field theory for octahedral complexes, now we're going to try to understand the variation in color in two uh, very similar transition metal complexes. Okay, so this is going to be hexa aqua nickel 2, and this is going to be tris ethylene diamine nickel 2. All right, it turns out that this uh, complex is green, and this complex is blue. Right. Something that is important about uh, this uh, uh, separation between uh, EG and T2G orbitals in transition metals when you have an octahedral environment is that the gap between those two sets of orbitals, what we call the splitting, depends on the ligand. And uh, this uh, can be followed by something that we call the spectro Kalt series, where you have that uh, the cyano uh, ligand uh, causes about the same splitting, more or less, as uh, a carbonyl ligand, a little uh, smaller than nitro, a little smaller than ethylene diamine, ammonia, aqua, or amine, and uh, aqua or water, and then the halogens. All right, so again, this tells you uh, these are ligands that uh, where the gap between those two sets of orbitals is very high. We call these strong field ligands. And these are ligands where uh, uh, the gap kind of narrows, right, so that it will be a weak field ligand. Okay, so notice that in the case of water, okay, because water appears later in the spe spectrochemical series, this gap should be smaller than for the case, case of ethylene diamine, right? So when we ca uh, draw the orbital diagram for the tris ethylene diamine complex for that nickel, okay, what you will actually have is that that gap has to be larger than in the case of uh, the hexa-aqua complex. All right, so now the question is, well, uh, why is this green then, and why is this blue? We do understand that the separation between these orbitals is smaller for uh, the water complex than for the ethylene diamine. But the question is, why, why do we have uh, the variation from green to blue? All right, so to understand color here, uh, we need to remember exactly how color is produced uh, uh, in complexes. Right, so the idea is that you're always going to, uh, going to have uh, a set of at least two orbitals, and then uh, this is your initial orbital, this is your final orbital or a state, and now you shine a photon, which has energy h nu, or hc over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength. Right, so initially your system is going to be in the low energy state, and if the energy of that photon that you're shining is exactly identical to the energy between the two states, initial to final, then you, uh, the photon will be absorbed and you may produce a transition from the low energy state to the high energy state. Right? So uh, if you shine visible uh, electromagnetic radiation of all wavelengths, but it turns out that only one specific wavelength of a photon gets absorbed, the color that you per, uh, perceived is the complementary of the one uh, that has been absorbed. Okay, so uh, in order to figure out uh, how the complementarity of color works for visible photons, we need to resort uh, to a color wheel, which is uh, pretty common, pretty popular uh, in many textbooks. Right, so we can divide the entire uh, visible electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation spectrum into uh, a few cells that tell you about the possible colors. Okay, so uh, let me actually draw that a little better. 
that's going to be the color wheel in which all of the colors of the visible uh, will be present. So that is one, and that is the other one. Here we go. So if we start here at 800 nanometers or 700 nanometers, it's a little better, to uh, 400 nanometers, okay, here we will have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and we can divide this cell into two that will be indigo and violet. Okay, so uh, that tells you that the order of colors from uh, high energy to low energy or short wavelength to long wavelength is along this line. It's going to be equal to Vib G4. And again, the energy increases this way and the wavelength increases that way. All right, so then uh, let's see here uh, how the complementary colors uh, work. So when you perceive a particular color in this wheel, the complementary color, the one that has been absorbed, is actually the one that is in the opposite side of this wheel. Okay, so if we observe here a green color for the hexa aqua uh, nickel complex ring, that means that the red is the color that has been absorbed. And if you observe a blue color for the trisethylene diamine complex, uh, which is right here, uh, here, blue, that means that the orange has been absorbed. Okay, so uh, now we actually have all that we need in order to uh, be able to understand this variation in colors for those nickel complexes. Okay, so notice that these are the absorbed colors, sorry, these are the perceived colors, and the absorbed colors, when we look at the color wheel, Again, for green, it's going to be red, and then for blue, it's going to be orange. Right? Uh, if we now consider that nickel is a D8 uh, transition metal, the electronic occupation would be like this. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then uh, for the trisethylene diamine com uh, complex, you'll have that. Right, so the transitions when you shine photons are always from the T2G, which is fully occupied, into the EG. That electron will be promoted and uh, that photon will be absorbed. Right, so notice that uh, for the hexa aqua complex, uh, because this gap is uh, smaller, then the energy of the photon that is absorbed needs to be smaller than the energy of the photon absorbed in uh, uh, the trisethylene. Uh, diamine complex, right? Notice that this energy, the photon, is larger in the ethylene, uh, trisethylene diamine complex than what you have in the hexa aqua complex. That makes perfect sense. Notice that if uh, uh, the photon that is absorbed is orange, right, that is of higher energy than what you have for the hexa aqua, right? So that is high energy, that is lower energy, that turns into blue, that turns into green. Okay, so uh, uh, in summary, what we have seen is that uh, you can explain variations in color in transition metal complexes with crystal field theory, and we have illustrated this uh, using uh, an octahedral complex of nickel. The idea is that uh, you need to know uh, what the relative uh, splitting between the T2G and EG orbitals is for each one of your complexes, and then uh, using a color wheel, you can look at the perceived colored and then uh, uh, determine what the absorbed color is and using this uh, hierarchy or order of colors according to the energy of the photons or the wavelength of the photons, then can, you can determine, you can match what color uh, uh, should be uh, uh, correlated to what large or small uh, energy gap.